SR running Gunstar Heroes. Hello. Hello. I am joined here today for one of the oldest, or one of the first Genesis Speed games I ever picked up, and that is this favorite game right here. And joined with me today is a fellow Gunstar Heroes runner, as well as Tasser. His name is Jim. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Do you theory Tasser for this game? Yeah, this is exciting stuff and some new stuff was uh, also discovered and found out thanks to those. And um, yeah, I'm gonna keep it that simple for introduction. You'll notice we have two cameras. Uh, I decided, I think the world needs to see just what kind of crazy inputs are required in order to actually play this game. Because we're gonna be getting a weapon combo. That requires full control from the player in this room. So before we get started, we gotta make sure we have the right difficulty selected. And we will get started in three, two, one, go. All right, so here we have Gunstar Heroes, a masterpiece for the Sega Genesis, made by Treasure. And you saw Dagron doing three fast menus. One was for this type of shot. We have free shot and fixed shot. Free shot lets you move and shoot at the same time, and fix shot lets you lets you shoot when you have to stand still. The second one was the weapon choice. Dagon chose the flame weapon because of the versatility that it has, so you can combine it with either another flame or laser or chaser. Dagon is going to be looking for a flame chaser combination that unfortunately didn't get, so we got the lightsaber, aka laser plus flame. And there we there we have it. Yeah, there we is. have it, the flame chaser. Both Flame Chaser and Lightsaber have the have like a really good property that is deleting bullets and projectiles. So this is gonna come in pretty handy for the boss on this stage. And the and the third part of the menu was to select the stage. We chose the pink stage because we have a better chance of getting the chaser drop that Dagger needed. And of course he got it. So we have the the Flame Chaser. So yeah, so there's there's four types of weapons in this in this game. There's Chaser, the green one, there's Flame that you're seeing right next to the Chaser on the top left of the screen. You have the laser that Dagon picked up as a placeholder before he got the Flame Chaser drop, and the Force weapon. Force is like never used because of it lacks damage and it doesn't have good combinations with other with other weapons. I'm gonna do a little magic trick here. <laughs> <laughs> just so yeah if um if you want to know uh, this is this corner here is the safe spot that i don't ask me why your hitbox just disappears i guess when you're off screen all right so we're actually coming up to the boss and there is a pretty important trick coming up here where i'm going to try and slide right underneath the boss and stay there and this is be this is important because being able to get this allows me to damage the boss as well as block all of its One, shots. Two. And this is why we use this weapon type. Yeah. Or lightsaber. Both are good. Yes. So here you see the boss shooting little laser projectors at the at, 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 or at, at Red, at the, at the main character. So with the, with the flame chaser, we can just get rid of the projectors and just and damage the boss from below. And that's it. That's, that's where flame chaser or lightsaber comes in handy. That's a stage clear. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, lightsaber is actually a very good option. A lot of people might not think about it. Uh, the main drawback with it is the uh, is the lack yeah, of range. Right. That's the that's the big thing. Yeah. And that's especially a big thing in this level. Uh, you want to talk about how incredibly awesome this uh, level yeah. is, Jim? This level in particular dice panels. As the name suggests, it's, it's a it's a it's a dice board. So we have a dice coming right up that can roll from one to three, one, two, or three, and it's all RNG. There is no manipulation for it. The com certain member, certain members of the community, such as me, Crescent, Rohisak, and more members, have tried to find a, a manip for for the dice palace, but we came to the conclusion that this is impossible due to the 
the nature of the R, the RNG changing. It changes every single frame multiple times. So there's no money possible for this dice palace. So we just have to roll with whatever the dice gives us. And yeah, this stage is like, this is, a, this is an 18 board, 18 board, 18 spaces, I mean. With the dice palace, we yeah. have, we have two, three, so we have five. We're gonna get into Minion Soldier. This is this can be a complicated fight if Minion Soldier gets, gets, gets close to you, so he grabs you. But what Tagrin is gonna do here, he's gonna throw in to the other side of the screen and then shoot him with the, the flame chaser. And yeah, and, and as Tagrin was saying, this this weapon is this weapon is king in terms of range. Something that the lightsaber doesn't have. Oh careful. Good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so if Minion Soldier tries to uh, to run at you, he's he's indicating he wants to grab you. Obviously, you don't want that to happen. That's like 20 yeah, damage. 20. Throws are pretty lethal in this game. Oh, that's three. Rolls are crazy. Yeah. Uh, this is big. This, uh, this almost, like, I, I would be excited with these rolls, yeah. but then there is another reason this this part of the game is very, very evil, and there is, and that's because of this final space before the boss space uh it's called the way back space what does it do well it sends you back to the beginning of the board <laughs> so very fun stuff uh yeah Two. oh my goodness i landed on a happy item yeah. room so the the great thing about the happy item rooms you can clear them real quickly so ideally you especially on expert mode you want to land on these spaces yeah, happy item rooms are, the, are, by, are by far the quickest rooms in Dice Palace. They got two, so this is Vortex Base. With with the Flame Chaser, this this fight is not not that hard because we can just damage damage him from the from the third step. And yeah, as Dragon was was mentioning, this level in particular is infamous for the Wayback Space, and that space is literally right before the end of the the stage, like the last space. So yeah, so there's. That's the, the main reason that the Discord, like the Gunstar Heroes speedrunning Discord is called the Dice Palace Support Group. Because we've all been there. We've all got we, we have all gotten the way back several times. And we all as Gunstar Heroes runners know the pain of getting the way back on good rolls on good RNG. So unfortunately uh, <laughs> unfortunately the um, a, a three roll is gonna land me on that space, so I'm really hoping I don't get it. Uh, this next roll. Yeah, we're hoping for a two roll and then anything that's not a one. Ooh, smush me. So uh, this jelly is actually, he can be pretty aggressive when he wants to. Okay, hoping for a, ho right. hoping for a two. Of course. Oh. <laughs> yep. There we go. Bye bye. 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 <laughs> yeah. So that's. Well. Yeah. That's the, and this is how it yeah, begins. That's the big <laughs> Gunster Hero speed running experience. Oh, two, three. Okay. Three. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe we won't lose that much oh. time. Okay. 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 We 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 got our hopes up. I jinxed it. <laughs> I've been getting a two, three, and. Keeping two spaces it was really good. it was awesome. But yeah, that, that's the reason of that's the reason of why this stage is infamous. The way back. That one space has made us suffer a lot. The whole community has been there getting the way back on good rolls. And unfortunately Diamond got it. <laughs> but yeah, this is how this is how yeah. good the game the game can it, be. It happens, it happens. It's it's one of those things that can happen, and uh, I just mentally prepare for it. But it really didn't cost us as much because we got very <laughs> lucky three. rolls after the fact, and another three. <laughs> okay, so this actually could have this this could have been way worse than it actually yeah. was, considering I got hit with that space. So yeah, so well, we're, we're here. here. Finally, say bus. hello to the little cow in the yeah. background. Because, Shout you out know. to the cow in the background. <laughs> yeah, Dagon is gonna stay here in a safe spot. And this fight also has an RNG factor, depends on the, on the number that the dice rolls. So we're gonna look his number. So we do not want a three. Okay, three means I have yeah, to move. Yeah, Dragon has to move now, because he got a three, has to move because he has a safe spot, but not with an attack. So yeah, the attacks depend on where he's gonna land after taking the steps. Okay, this is a safe spot. 
What's the next one too? This is a safe spot. At this point, it's it's good to have the least laggy attacks if I'm forced to move. Mm -hmm. And there we yep. go. That's uh, that's the fight. clear. Yeah. So with that stage out of the way, that's that's pretty much the big RNG uh, nightmare part of the the run out of the way. But there is quite a bit more that they will throw at us. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, this game this game has a lot. It, it wouldn't be a treasure game without it. You know. If you've ever seen Alien Soldier, <laughs> Alien Soldier's really bad for RNG. Um, if you've seen Dynamite Heady, it's also really bad for RNG. Any treasure game you can think of, there's going to be at least one really bad RNG moment. Oh, yeah. um, no. So, we're here. We're here at Green Stage, and there is really nothing going on here. I can just duck and avoid all the hazards, and as long as I dodge the bullets, and that thing there, uh, we're good. So, yeah, this is just one giant long auto scroller. So you have plenty more than enough time to get quite a few donations in. That sounds good. Um, first donation, and I must stress, this one is in all capital letters. It is from Thally for twenty dollars. That just says, "How could I forget this game?" So, I think someone's pretty <laughs> excited to see it here. Um, I've also got twenty-five dollars from Limpy Limbs. Thanks for all the good vibes and all the hard work from GDQ and the runners. I've also got $50 from Game Popper. Hey, AGDQ. Glad to watch the Gunstar Heroes run and see speedrunners doing what they do best for a good cause. And I think there may have been a slight misunderstanding here. It says, P.S. To Samurassi, you better beat it quick. I only have an hour of my lunch break to watch while you play, but I gotta stress, it's, uh... Tegron SR doing this speedrun, and he is absolutely killing it. Amazing work. I'm it's actually quite a bit of damage, so I'm gonna kick it. Thank <laughs> you, nice. So if here's, a, here's a little nice bit of information. Uh, those birds, they'll drop uh, whatever item they're holding onto, and if you can get one of the enemies to hit the bird as well, they'll drop another one, so you can get two things out of them. And that's all I got to say about that. Uh, anyway, continue. Absolutely. Um, I've got $50 here from Curderoy. Just says, good morning, AGDQ. Bright and early good morning to you, too. And Sly Coop donates $25. It's a hard time for many, and we've never needed something... We've never needed something fun to give us a mental break more than now. So excited to tune into a week of GDQ. Thank you so much for your donation. Got time for a few more? All right, oh, so sorry. here. Yeah. Uh, actually, we are gonna yeah. we're gonna cut it off here. So here's Shed here's Smash Daisaku. We call uh, we call him M Bison yeah. though because I mean he looks like him. And uh, yeah, here's yeah. the boss. This is probably this is easily the longest fight of the game. It's a very exhausting fight. So um, I'm going to focus here, yeah. Jim. I'll let you take. So here, here. If I, we have green, and this boss is called Seven Force. So as the name suggests, Seven Force has seven different transformations: Soldier Force, Urchin Force, Tail Force, Eagle Force, Blaster Force, Crab, Crab Force, and Tiger Force. So he's going to always open up with Soldier Force. So we're gonna, we're gonna see Dragon sitting on that spot just to dodge the boomerangs. Okay, urchin. Urchin force right now. So we have, we have vertical and horizontal parts of this fight. Vertical is, is always gonna be either urchin, tail, or oh. eagle force. So we got urchin first. This is the, this is the vertical space that takes the most damage. Has 4.3k HP. So yeah, this is... So I accidentally swapped weapons yeah. there. Yeah, no, no, no big <laughs> deal, no big deal. So coming up, we have Grab Force, and if I remember correctly, yeah, Grab is Force is the one that that has the most HP all, out of them all. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely the most tiring one because I have to keep this spot and keep rotating yeah. the darn thing. Yes, and this is the this is phase is why this fight is so exhausting because you really have to keep the consistency going here, and it's, yeah, it's hard. Tight. It's hard. It's exhausting on, on, on your hands. So we have Tail Force now. Tail Force, we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna want Tail Force to stay on the right side of the screen after he gets here. So yeah, Tail Force can stay on the right side 
or go to the or come near you and do an attack. So this is a good pattern for now. Staying there. That one has to go a little bit. Pretty good. Pretty good. So coming up we have now nice. Blaster Force. So Blaster Force might seem deadly, but we have a safe safe spot for it. So it's never gonna hit us. And they're oh, oh, oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's, a, it's not a big deal again, but yeah, that's a safe spot for Blaster Force, the fifth force. So we have the sixth force right now. It's gonna be Eagle Force, the one that has the, the less amount of HP with four thousand and six. So for Eagle Force, there's there's a way to to cycle, to cycle it. Oh, but the dragon will hit twice. Yeah, I, I I messed up. I messed up there. Yeah, with with enough damage, you, you you're able to to cycle it, but unfortunately. I got damage there, so it goes up and down again. 66 HP left, and, and last but not least, we have Tiger Force. But for Tiger Force, we're just gonna stay there at the bottom right of the screen. The, the key yeah, key. this is a bit of an RNG. This is a bit RNG because sometimes Tiger Force just likes to, to pull charge the right uh -huh. side, and you will get hit no matter what if that happens. Yeah, this is kind. Oh, I am really losing control. Kind this of thing. a safe spot, but yeah, we're we're pretty safe here. And that's that's Sam Force. Yeah, Sam Force is a heavy RNG fight and pretty exhausting on your hands. So pretty good job, Dagon, right here. Stage clear. Good job. Thank you. And all right, so we select that stage third for a reason, or I do, because after such an exhausting fight, we gotta have at least a little downtime to to sort of relax our hands. It's better than trying to relax it in stage five where I actually do need to worry about my survival. So we have another, uh, I guess somewhat, uh, I mean, it is an auto scroller, but um, we do have things to talk about with this stage. Yeah. Um, so we'll start with the glitch that sort is gonna, that we're gonna try to do uh, at the, at the tail end of the stage. So we're gonna, you, probably saw M. Bison, in, or if you saw M. Bison in the previous stage, we're gonna, you know, see him again. We're gonna encounter him again, but this time we're actually gonna fight him. Uh, he doesn't have much health, and there is a glitch associated with him where if we damage him and then try to grab him, throw him, and then try to do damage while he's trying to retaliate from said throw, it, it potentially can put him into a glitch state where it will remove his iframe limiter. Uh -huh. And that allows us to keep a constant string of damage on him. And it's a pretty recently discovered glitch, and sometimes it can be a bit finicky. So hopefully we get it. And uh, that's the beneficial glitch. The other big glitch in this stage is the uh, is what we have aptly call the orange softlock, which isn't technically correct. It's more of a temporary softlock where the game goes into limbo for about two minutes. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, we didn't know what caused it for the longest time until I decided to do a little research and found out it had something to do with this airship itself that I'm currently standing on. You're gonna notice it oscillate up and down and this goes on cycles. It needs to complete whatever cycle it's on in order to prevent this soft luck from happening. Yeah. Okay, so we got killed him. So this part can be a little, little sketch. There we go. That was actually very clean. We're gonna get up on this tightrope here. Yes. Quickly kill this mini bus here. And then that's pretty much the stage itself. Yes, yeah, so if you look at the stage right now, it's going up and down. So Diamond is gonna need to see the cycle of the oscillation of the stage. So should be good, should be good, yeah, very We're good. good. So yeah, and then about the glitch, I was invited by some glitch that Diamond mentioned. That glitch is, has been, is, is done in the co-op speedrun because there's someone that could damage the idea, it. yeah, really good. So, <laughs> if, if, he didn't get, if he didn't get the that glitch, uh, M. Bison, or Smash, uh, Smash Dice, actual name, M. M. Bison, as we like to call him, had, had iframes, and then we, we could have damaged him for like 180 HP. And then into iframes, but as Tyron got the glitch, no iframes for M. Bison. And this is the by far the easiest fight in the game right now, the orange fight. You go, you go down, you go, you throw him, you go down again, up, throw, and that's it. 
Yeah, it's all about manipulation. You, you, so if you're below orange, he's gonna try to do the flex, and that's a very easy attack to just simply bait him out to do, and then just kick back up and throw him down. Orange is very susceptible to throws, so yeah. throwing is your best option against him, which does kind of sound a bit scary, because he could throw you too. But um, yeah, if you, as long as you do that, he's, he's a very free fight um, in that stage. And now we have stage five. Say this saving yellow, and this stage also is really dangerous because it's a long stage. We have a lot of enemies right now, and the enemy's behavior on expert difficulty is something else. I must say, it's, it's, it's something else. Uh, nice kid. Yeah, that kid. Yeah. So there, there's an enemy flying on the screens on on every on every face of this stage. And that enemy, that flying enemy, we can throw, we can throw him at the phantom, that enemy that Tagrin just killed at the bottom of the screen. And we can quick kill the phantom if we throw the that, enemy, that flying enemy into the phantom. That depends on the on the explosions of the flying enemy when they hit the phantom. This is the second phantom of the stage. Yeah, we see the flying enemy. It's on iframes, so we get we got no damage. 15 HP from the heart. Then we're gonna move on to the next section of the stage, the yellow section. So we're gonna face the yellow phantom, and this is the one. The, 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 theoretically, all the phantoms can get quick killed. They can all be quick killed, but again, the quick kills on the pink and the yellow one are easier. And this, oh. Uh, oh, I didn't get the one. I didn't get that oh, quick kill. That's unfortunate. unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. So yellow phantom. Oh, that that's a pretty lucky move yeah. right there. Yeah, so if they if they do slide though, their their iframes won't get triggered. So it's um Yeah, that was actually pretty fortunate that it decided to the slide there. Um but yeah, you, you wanna ideally kill the, the yellow phantom because he has a lot of health. Or he has a lot of health. This is the last part of this stage of this stage five, the the green section. Dagron has is counting the, the kicks, the melee attacks and on his mind right now. So, so he can know where the next walker is, this big enemy, the walker. Oh, Good one. Oh. Good throw. Okay. I um, did not know that was a thing. I could just throw an enemy right into that guy, and it kills the walker automatically. And here we see... I'm learning new <laughs> things every time. We learn All new right, things so every day. So here is Smash Taisaku again, and we can do the same trick that we did on the other stage, throwing him up and then damaging him, and got we got it, it again. Amazing stuff from Dagon right now. So this is a big, this is a, this is big to actually get this one here in particular. It's about 10 seconds I save. But yeah, otherwise his iframes would be kicking in every time I do just a bit of damage. Ooh, okay. Yeah. So the, the big difference between the orange, the orange Smash Daisaku and stage five Smash Daisaku is that stage five has more than 2k health. So getting the glitch in this stage is really good and for the second phase we're gonna jump and, and then he jumps and then we're gonna throw him down so we kill him at the right corner of the screen so yeah he never dies i never die all right so that was actually the stage i was most concerned about um that is the most likely place to die in the run so nice to get that one out of the way so at the very least this is looking like an okay-ish run Getting it with the way back is going to... Oh, but guarantee there is no world record hype to this run, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, coming up now is a very, very long auto-scroller. And um, it, on expert mode, it's a pretty chaotic mm -hmm. auto-scroller, though. It's it's more or less a shmup type of, type <laughs> yeah. of deal where... <laughs> where you're in a spaceship, you're pursuing this large ship that you're currently seeing now. And, yeah, it's just, it's a series of gauntlet of enemies that you have to avoid, because damaging them causes return fire, uh, which we can block. We can block all of the attacks with it, but even just causing a whole bunch of explosions causes a lot of lag, so we just... Ideally, to save the most time, we're just going to avoid everything and hope we just survive, which does sound pretty scary. It does sound pretty scary. Uh, yeah. But, um, 
We, we survived the previous level, so I'm feeling pretty good about my chances. Yeah, you're doing amazing. You're doing amazing diamond right now. So yeah, this is the space stage. A really long auto scroller, if I remember correctly. This is a 9 mil auto scroller, or, or like, not, not a 9 mil, like 6 or 7 mil auto scroller of this spaceship going towards the space, towards the Emperor, Emperor Grey, the main enemy, Emperor, Emperor Grey's spaceship. So we have a lot of bullets, a lot, a lot of stuff on screen that we have to dodge. So yeah, this place like a shoot 'em up, like a very, like a, like an horizontal shmup. Yeah, <laughs> dodging bullets is something I like watching, to be honest. Yeah, so Tigran is not gonna be shooting in this stage because all we're gonna, all we're gonna, we're gonna pray for is lag reduction. Lag reduction in this stage is key because the flame weapon, like every flame weapon, produces a lot of lag and. Considering the amount of sprites we got on screen and the flame weapons, Tigran most of the time is not going to be shooting. So we avoid every opportunity we can, where, where we can get lag. That's we will shoot the enemies here because it is uh, it is easier to dodge uh, if it's only just one turret shooting yeah. at us. Uh, meteors hit pretty hard. Yeah, so he's, he's going to be shooting sometimes but most of the time he's not gonna be shooting just for lag reduction yeah like 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 can lose you a lot of time in this stage at least yeah we do I, I tend to ignore that one with the big laser because he's like the most non-threatening enemy of that entire wave and uh, prioritizing him over any of the other ones is just a mistake they you never do more than once. All right, so this is a nice little safe spot for this part. This, otherwise, if you try to normally dodge these lasers like the way you would think you're supposed to, it's it, <laughs> you're you're in for a lot of pain. Yeah, it's it's very tough to to pull off. Oh yeah, so this is pretty much like a long auto scroller, so we have like nothing. Nothing like really, really yeah. worth mentioning. Yeah, you, you're pretty much. We, you can pretty much just take the the wheel and um, uh, take some more donations while we uh, wait for this to end. You got it. Adam donates fifty dollars, saying, "Good luck, Degron. Love one another." Thank you. And I've also got a twenty-five dollar donation from Adam the Feverish. It's that time of the year again, folks. I look forward to these marathons each year, and I can't wait to see some incredible runs. And I also have a $15 donation from another Insomniac. Stayed up to see my favorite childhood game, Gunstar Heroes. So many memories of my siblings and I yelling at each other in two-player mode. Thank you to my boyfriend for introducing me to GDQ and to GDQ for helping a cause that hits close to home. Sending lots of love from California. All right, so mini boss coming up here. Uh, do you remember what this thing's name is? I think it's <laughs> a thousand don't. millimeter cannon, I think. Oh, a thousand oh, millimeter gun. Yeah, okay. I, I... Yeah, so. Yeah, so we're basically trying to get rid of everything that yeah. comes out. It it like throws out four bullets that turn into big lasers. Don't ask me why, it just does. And then there's also these regular pink bullets that it shoots out too, so all of it's gotta be destroyed. Yeah, this is another occasion where the flame chaser comes in handy because we were getting rid of the projectiles that the thousand millimeter gun was shooting. So good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Wait, wait. Okay. okay, now the enemies are gone. We can actually kill that thing. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. If you try to kill it, if you try to kill it while the enemies were still there, it would have caused a bunch of lag. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Time save. Save in the frames. You know. That's what we do. I'm um, gonna. So this last section on the on the space stage can sometimes get pretty difficult because there's a lot of bullets on screen and a lot of enemies. So we're gonna have to see Dragon with the best dodging skills. Right now, oh, oh, I, oh, I, oh okay, well, I got nine hit, damage, but... not too much. Careful with the missiles. All right. Oh, see. Yeah, one of them, I think, 
One of them can do like yeah, 100 damage. Yeah, like one of those missiles if you're in the wrong spot. can deal 100 damage to you, so have to be pretty careful, careful about that. And coming up right now, we have Seven Force, the return of Seven Force that we saw on Green Stage. And we, we, one thing we're hoping for on this refight of Seven Force is that we don't see Eagle Force, because that because Eagle Force is the lightest of the transformation of Seven Force. So far, we're gonna we have seen Tiger Force and Soldier Force. Tiger Force, once again, and there it is, e oh, Eagle. There's Eagle, the Eagle Force. <laughs> Unfortunately, look at this lag. Yeah. Look at this lag. Yeah, the difference is pretty no noticeable right now with the lag that Eagle Force causes. Blaster Force. Oh. Isn't too bad. Urging Force either. It's, this, one is, this one is really good. You can get rid of the lasers that he's shooting. Okay, come on. Oh, so what Dagon is going to try to do now? Uh, oh. Okay, yeah, no, he's... Oh, unfortunately. Yeah, he's just yeah. getting put, so I'm just... What Dagon was trying to do is yeah. trying to get Seven Force to the left border of the screen so he could just explode up into off screen faster. But that was unfortunate. Not a big deal anyways. And now we're heading into the Core Guard system. We're inside Emperor Grey's ship right now. And this is the core guard system, the security system of the ship, also known as the unit off. Yeah, the core guard system has three phases, unit of the hammer, unit of the dragon, and unit of the runner. Careful with unit of the hammer though, because it can give us a really troll pattern that makes it makes us play jump rope, and it loses us 20 seconds doing that. So far, so good. He's the worst RNG, worst RNG fight in the game right here. Yeah. Uh, um, he's being nice. Yeah. Nice. All right. You need the, Making up for the fact I got way back space. Yeah, you need of the hammer was nice. So now we, we're coming into you of the dragon that also has a small RNG factor. The small RNG factor on unit of the dragon is how often he goes back into the background. But yeah, it, it's not like it's not a big deal. It's not a, it's not a big time loss compared to the time loss that you know, you know the hammer could, could cause you. Stay right here. Hopefully, it stays on the screen. It's kind uh, of the deal. Uh, okay. Went into the background. It's not ideal. Unfortunate. Okay. Really unlucky. Unlucky. Whoa, really unlucky. Unfortunate. Yeah, that was really unfortunate. Okay, he went back, and that's unit of the dragon. Okay. And now for the last phase, unit of the runner. There's a way to five cycle it. That's the fastest way to do it. That depends on us getting all the damage possible on the cycles. So, hoping for Dagon to get this one. Go, Dagon. Yeah, it's... So, the random element here with this fight is sometimes he can swing really far to the left and he can hit us with the, his his attack if he does that. Uh, otherwise, it's a, it's a fairly easy fight. Uh, we, we do call him Vector Man. Yep. He does look like Vector Man. Ooh. Okay, nice. I forgot... Cycle. Okay, so we're not gonna get the quick kill because I really messed up uh, this fight. So he'll he always is gonna shoot one projectile upwards, like diagonally upwards, and then the other one is gonna be on the floor. Ah, that that's still a good fight. Still a good fight. Yep. Yeah, it's it's he always follows a, a pattern. He shoots up, and then he shoots straight forward. And he just cycles between yeah. those. All right, so boss rush time. Uh, we're gonna start with Duck Battalion. There is a nice little uh, manip we're gonna try to do where we want to force him to shoot directly down in front of him. This isn't actually gonna hit us. Uh, hopefully he does it. Okay, there we go. Uh, he is gonna do that in response. So yeah, this is meant to sort of buy time. Oh, I got hit that time. But yeah, it's it's meant to sort of mitigate the the, the heavy amount of luck on that fight. Because uh, I mean, it doesn't completely get rid of it, but if you force him to do uh, certain attacks, you know, it, it's just more time spent actually damaging the boss. And the sooner you get rid of that phase, the the faster you get past the the RNG factor of the, the fight. Although the second phase was a bit RNG mm -hmm. too. Uh, he could choose to just stand there and. Shoot at you jump. or jump. Yeah, yeah. And this is where Dagon won't be using Flame Chaser. He's going to be using the sim single fire so he can destroy the bubbles that are going to come up next once this boss reaches the 2.5k HP point. 
So yeah, this is pretty much melee attack. We get iframes from the melee attack. So he's not gonna hit us. Oh. Oh, I got hit. Oh, it's just a bad timing. Still good. And now this is where the, the bubbles start to come in. And this is why we choose flame for a weapon. We can damage pink lobster and destroy the bubbles at the same time. Yeah, that's, that's pink lobster done. One of the four bosses we, we saw in this game at the start, so it, yeah, as Darren was mentioning, this is the boss rush, the gauntlet. All the bosses that we... Alright, this is my... This yeah. is my favorite fight right orange here. Orange 2. So this is the Orange 3 fight. Yeah. Orange 2. Very lethal attacks this guy has. I'm gonna try to lock him down in the right side. Hopefully he cooperates. No, he doesn't! Bang. Yeah, <laughs> that attack in particular, the Big Bang attack, can deal up to 60 damage. And when you're playing on on expert difficulty, it's deadly. And the orange goes crazy in this fight. Careful, good, good throw. So yeah, what we're gonna what we're gonna do here is damage orange with the flame chaser as much as we can, and then we're gonna throw him to deal, to maximize the the damage output right now. And that was a really good orange too fight. Yeah, it, it's um. <laughs> The, the, the RNG with that fight is he can be somewhat aggressive at the start with actually doing an attack. He's not normally aggressive if you keep within a certain distance of him. So what? But yeah, moving on, Blackfly, big RNG here. Uh, a lot of RNG. The, this is a good gauntlet. Yeah. There's like four different patterns he can choose yeah, to do. Yeah, four different patterns that he can do, and this one was good. Oh, this is a good pattern. Ooh. So we want to actually have this attack. It is very laggy, but we get free damage. Oh, or I get hit by it. Nice. Okay, well, that's fine. Yes. So there's a nice little trick here. We're going to once again abuse the iframes. The attack, yeah, so... The iframes get you through the laser that Blackfly shoots. And we're hoping to get into the good, good elevator cycle right now. I think it's not going to be a good one. Uh, I think it might have something to do with the second phase. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is a bad one. And coming out, coming out right now is one of the most dangerous fights in the entire game. We're basically going to do the same that we, we did with Orange, damaging with damaging Green this time with the Flame Chaser. But but to the point that he doesn't trigger the iframes. And then we're going to throw him to the wall so we can damage, we can maximize the damage output. So. That's pretty much the maneuver for green, same as orange, but this guy right here, green is way more deadly than orange is. Because if green gets free from this kind of lock, things can get pretty messed up. Yeah, so far so good for diamond right now. Good damage with the flame chaser and from the throws. 1.28 KHP left, 752 right now. Two cycles, two more cycles. That's one. Link chaser and the throw, and that's it for green too. Nice, really good green too. Yeah, I um, I accidentally triggered the iframes. Once. Uh, I think on the second, yeah, I triggered it once, and that caused the slide attack. The entire goal there is to get him to stay on that right side and just lock him down using that strat, and just repeatedly doing that over and over again. And it's it's hard to maintain because. If even you don't press a direction for even a split second, the flame chaser has a tendency to trail somewhere else. Yeah. And that's a big, big problem on that fight. And now time for the final fight of the game, Gold and Silver. So how do we deal damage to Gold and yeah. Silver? We have to damage the gems that we have been collecting throughout the entire game that are rotating on top, right on top of the screen right now, as you can see. And something that a runner called Big Blue found way back in the day is that that magic spot, that magic pixel that Diagon is standing on right now. If you crouch and shoot with the flame chaser on that exact same spot, Golden Silver will not be attacking you. He will not be as aggressive as he can be. Yeah, and another thing that that was discovered recently is that the, the, the gem that you damage the most on the first phase is the one that he's gonna choose to, to shoot you on the second phase. But that's it. Final stage clear. Time is gonna come up whenever the screen screen fades to black after gold and silver flies off the screen. So I thank everyone for, for watching uh, this, um, this rather treasured sort of uh, 
<laughs> Sorry for the pun there. <laughs> uh, this uh, in- incredible uh, little gem of a Genesis game. Uh, yeah, time. One of the very first Genesis games I ever actually played, so uh, I was happy to show it off to you all. Uh, finally, after however many years it's been since the last time uh, a single player run of this has ever been done, which I think was way back in 2010, before most people even knew Game Stun Quick was even a thing. So, um, and that was by Michael Yama, our very, uh, uh, the very person who allowed Game Stun Quick to be a thing. So shout outs to him. Mm-hmm. And uh, before I sign off, I'm gonna say, one more shout out to a runner that comes from China. His name is Big Blue, and he is, he's is he been a, a big, big part of um, of where the run is now. Like, he has found uh, a lot of the more recent stuff, like the the glitch on M. Bison, Smash Daisaku. Uh, he found that. Uh, he was the first to actually uh, introduce that in his runs, anyway. And he was also the one to find the uh, the sweet spot on the gold and silver fight, which made that fight uh, a, a lot easier than it used to be. And that's it. That's uh, that's Gunstar Heroes. Uh, I'm Dagrin, and with me was Jim. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of the marathon. Well, thank you so much, Degron. That was an absolutely amazing run, and welcome back, everyone. This is Awesome Games Done Quick 2022 online. Let's get to some donations. Anonymous donates $50. Great to see Gunstar Heroes, a great game with an awesome soundtrack. Good luck on the run. Well, you didn't need luck. He did absolutely amazing. I've also got $25 from Smoochum. Good luck, Degron. Woke up early to watch you. You got this. And O3 Tomasu donates $50. Second day, second dono. Let's go, gamers. And you know what? This is a great time to remind everyone that over the course of AGDQ 2022, If you donate a cumulative amount of $250, you are entered into the grand prize draw, including a heroic replica Zelda grand prize pack, which is a replica of the Dark Link styled Master Sword, Hillian Shield, and Megaton Hammer. Absolutely amazing prizes, so everyone, please get your donations in if you would like a chance to win. I have to say, I love this donation. Uh, Plasma donates $50 that just says, hi, hello, thank you for your donation, thank you. And I I have a $50 donation from Anonymous. And I have just been told that coming up, we have an interview with Vikas, who's going to be running Environmental Station Alpha next. So please give it up for Vikas. Hello gamers of Awesome Games Done Quick 2022 online. My name is Adef and we are joined by Vicus who will be running Environmental Station Alpha in just a little bit here. But we have this fun interview. Beforehand, Vicus, how are you feeling? Um, I'm pretty excited. I uh, actually got a world record in my practice runs a bit earlier in the week. So I, I think it's going to be a pretty good show. Amazing. You, you've actually jumped the gun just a little bit. I have. I did my research. I've got that question buried. Mm. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Vicus, you've run quite a few different games. Uh, so, I'm curious, what drew you to Environmental Station Alpha specifically? Uh, so, it's actually kind of a funny story. Uh, it was, I guess, two years ago at this point. Uh, we decided we wanted to do a uh, speed run, twelve hour challenge to just try out a game. And I was having a lot of trouble figuring out, like, okay, what would be fun to stream uh, for a few hours with Serene, who will be co-commentating with me. Uh, you know, is there any game that works really well for this kind of thing? And I remembered I had played Environmental Station Alpha years and years prior to that. Uh, on a whim, I kind of just looked up the tricks and I was just like, oh, hey, this is this is actually really cool. And like, first it was just 
doing the challenge, but I have basically been playing it as kind of my regular speed game for basically the entire time since. Amazing. Uh, and, you know, I noticed looking at the leaderboard that there's some interesting different categories in this game. Yes. Could you tell me a bit about the different main runs and what made you want to do this one specifically? Yes, definitely. So the way that Environmental Station Alpha works is that there are four different endings that you get as you go along the game. And they're all kind of meant to be gotten sort of in order, but for a lot of them, you can skip around pretty aggressively if you know what you're doing. Um, the one that most people run is the first normal ending, Virus Percent, which okay. is ending one, basically. Uh, what we're actually going to be doing today, and has never been seen on the uh, marathon before, is actually uh, ending two, Surface Percent. And that's basically meant to be the, you've beaten the game, now you need to collect a bunch of extra collectibles on top of that, and then you get a completely ridiculous overpowered upgrade that lets you do pretty much whatever you want in the station, and it turns out that there's actually some like way more challenging content that's like locked behind actually having that. And uh, we basically just go to that second ending now. So the, the final boss on the first one in Virus is actually quite difficult. Okay. This one doesn't technically have a boss, but it has some movement that might as well be considered the final boss. So look forward <laughs> to the end of the run and see how many tries it takes me to get through that. Awesome. I, I'm, I'm, you, you've given me the spice. Now I'm very <laughs> interested. Uh, mm -hmm. So, like you said, I noticed when looking at the leaderboard that you very recently, like the last few days, got a new world record in this category. Mm -hmm. And so, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. But second of all, you know, how did this new record feel to achieve? Were you expecting it? Were you not? Like, were you really close to PBing? Or? Uh, so I was... Earlier in the week, fairly close. Uh, a big thing about this category is that the entire back half of it, uh, almost every mistake that I can make in it costs like 30 seconds to a minute. So oh, wow. for a run to even possibly be world record, maybe, it has to be, uh, you have to get all of these big things right. And then you also have to find a place that you can just like, you know, sneak in a few time uh, improvements. Sure. Luckily, though, that did mean that my last world record was actually kind of unoptimized in certain spots because that was just the first time that I happened to do everything right on a run like that. Um, so a lot of it was that GDQ forcing me to sit down and like practice the run was really, <laughs> really good for improving just, you know, consistency in it. So yeah, nice. nothing, nothing like a looming deadline to make you want to improve as fast as you can. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, can we expect to maybe see a world record in the marathon run? I would say it's possible, but okay. only if I hit every one of the tough tricks to begin with. So, you know, <laughs> fingers crossed. I'll, Stay I'll go tuned. that part. Stay <laughs> tuned. Exactly. Uh, so, Vikas, I know that AGDQ benefiting the Prevent Cancer Foundation is particularly special to you. Uh, so I was wondering if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about your story. Uh, yes. So uh, at age 21, I was actually diagnosed with uh, testicular cancer. And it was uh, caught relatively early, but it had still spread like fairly far. Um, I did have to get surgery. I did have to get chemotherapy. And it's, uh, you know, it's obviously kind of crazy to think when I was 21 years old, because that's not really the age demographic that you usually think right. about it. But uh, through all of that, like, uh, I've always kind of felt close with, like, cancer charities, with, uh, you know, hearing other people's stories. So, like, when I found GDQ, which I think was a few years after that, um, it always, like, you know, it was really cool to see that people doing speedruns, people just playing games, uh, could be raising money for that kind of thing. And, you know, I've, I've always thought it'd be really cool if I could be in a marathon, especially for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. It's, it's well, really, here. really cool that, hey, I made it. <laughs> Amazing. Well, Vikas, thank you so much for sharing your story. And gamers, be sure to donate so that we can tell more stories like Vikas's in the future. Uh, and Vikas, thank you so much for your time. Uh, hey, and I know too. we're all pumped to see your speedrun environmental station alpha coming up in just a little bit. I've been ADEF. AGDQ gamers, keep your eyes glued to the screen. There's more speedrunning coming up right after this.